It's easy to implement basic animations in SwiftUI. Let's say we have a basic view of a circle view and it has a X position value of 100. And all you need to do to make something animate is add this modifier down here, animation. And whenever this X position changes, then it's going to automatically animate. So for example, if we change this X position to 600, Let's say, for example, that we have a button press and it changes this value from 100 to 600. Then, with no animation, it will simply just snap into place. But with this dot animation modifier added, it will nicely animate to the position that we want. So let's see how this all works in code. So here is our basic content view. And I want to add a button. And when that button is pressed, I want it to cause a circle to animate to the top of the screen. So how do we do that? First of all, I'm going to add my button, but I'm just going to put an empty action inside of this button. So action, and then I can just put the curly braces there, and that's kind of an empty action for now. And I want this button to say change position. Now let's embed this button inside of a Z stack. And let's add a circle right here. All shapes are push out views, as we discussed in a previous lesson. And so I want this to pull in a bit. I want it to be a width of 100 and a height of 100. OK. There we go. And I'll format my code by doing Control i And uh, you can see that the button is now stacked on top of the circle because they are both in a Z stack. I want to move this button down a bit so you can do that very easily through an offset. And I want to offset just the Y value, that's the vertical value, by 300. So it just moves that value down to 300 right here. For our circle, I want to add a color. And I want to make a variable for this color. So I will go up here, make a new variable color and I'll tell it that I want it to equal color uh, dot pink and I added the state attribute as well to this variable so that we can have it change automatically as well one more thing I want to add for this circle view is an offset and we'll have this offset be y of 0 now let's just preview and make sure that everything is working and it looks good but one thing that I want to happen is I want this value here this offset to change dynamically. And so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to do that with a Boolean. So I'm going to create a new uh, variable up here. And I will call it variable on top. And I will set it equal to false. So this will be a Boolean type. So what I want to happen is when this on top changes from false to true, then it's going to change this y position. And I'm going to do that with a ternary operator here. So ternary operator says, when some condition is true, provide one value. Otherwise, give it a different value. So in this case, I can say self dot on top. And if that is true, then make this y offset to be negative 350. But if it's false, just be 0. So let's preview. And so now, because this is false, it's just going to give it an offset of 0, so it'll stay in the middle. But when on top is true, and we preview that, we can see that it moves to the top up here. So now we just have to make our button perform an action such that it changes this variable. And because this has a state attribute, whenever this variable changes, it will automatically update the circle view for us. And we can just do that by putting inside of this closure right here, self dot on top dot toggle. Now whenever we press this button, it will toggle that position on and off. Let's check it out. So I'm going to activate live preview. And on top is currently true. So when I tap change position, it will just move this up and down. Now it's very simple to animate this. I just add animation, 
and I'll just use the default animation. So now it has this default animation whenever I tap a button. So what about the cases when you want the action to do a little bit more, to have a little bit more functionality? You could just start to add more statements inside of here that change variables, but the code will be a little bit cleaner if we just make it into a function. So let's do that now. So we'll call this function on button tap. We'll make our function down here. Func on button tap. And we want the on top variable to toggle between true and false. And we can also add in here if on top, if that is true, then we want the color to equal color dot pink. Else we want the color on top to be color dot orange. Okay. So now when we test out our live preview, we see that when on top is false, this circle will be orange. And when it's true, then it's going to be pink and have this new position. So it can animate between the color and the position at the same time. Very convenient. One more thing that I want to show you. This Z stack here, if I put a background color on this, it will show me the balance of the Z stack. So I'll just say color.yellow. And now this is the Z stack here. So what you can see is that the circle and the button are both outside of the bounds of the Z stack, but they're still showing up. In order to change that, let's put a push out view here. Let's say color.black. Now it will push out the entire Z stack. So this is the new bounds of the Z stack because the color is taking up uh, all of the space that the Z stack can offer it. So the Z stack grows to accommodate the demands of the child. Okay, so now we can see here when this circle is on top, it's still peeking outside of the bounds of the Z stack. Well, what if you don't want that? Well, you can add a simple modifier here called clipped. Now it's going to clip all of the child views that are inside of that Z stack. And so when we change this here, we can see, still see that it animates, but it animates within the bounds that it's given. So that's a basic example of how you can animate a circle based off a of button action.